What's going on everybody? This is Keith Mitchell here from the Outer Haven. And today I have an interesting question that you have likely asked someone or have been asked yourself. That being said, what is your stance on digital versus physical games? Recently, I had the same conversation with several of my friends and it had me thinking about that. More specifically, since I'm mainly a PC gamer and for the past decade or so, I really didn't have any say in the matter, seeing that physical games for PC gaming had gone the way of the dodo. With the rise of digital storefronts such as Steam, Battle.net, Epic Game Store, and more, there simply isn't any way to get PC games on physical media. While many don't think about that, especially those who predominantly play on consoles, that was the first fire shot that signaled that the gaming industry and the gaming scene was about to change. Even right now, there aren't just PC gaming digital storefronts, and now we have them for consoles. We have Xbox Game Store, we have the PlayStation Store, and we have the Nintendo eShop or whatever they're calling on stuff now. So as you can see, digital gaming has been here for quite some time, regardless of what platform you are. But I suppose now that the upcoming Alan Wake 2, the follow-up to the horror suspense game Alan Wake was announced as a digital only game, well now the debate has been brought back into the forefront yet again, and this time apparently there's more at stake. I didn't say it, other people are saying that. Now, I can't speak for anyone watching or listening to this, but for me, I just prefer digital only gaming catalogs for a number of reasons. First off, it's just simply easier and cheaper. When you go to a store to purchase games, either Best Buy or Amazon or GameStop or whatever, you either have to wait for the game to be shipped to you or you have to travel to the store. Now sure, it sounds lazy and trust me, being a father of two children and a husband, I'm anything but, but I also don't have a lot of time. So being able to just go to any of the digital storefronts to purchase a game just works better for me. I also hate paying taxes on my games, so if I buy them on any of the number of digital storefronts, I don't have to pay taxes and I don't have to give anybody more of my hard earned money. I also don't need to worry about my games being damaged or lost. You know, my son loves to lose my Nintendo Switch games and I've had to replace way too many of those games due to how small they are and it's just very infuriating. Going digital, I don't have to worry about that. In fact, even though I'm not a fan of Nintendo's terrible online stores, it is a godsend to be able to just purchase Super Mario Kart and just play it on my Switch versus my son saying, hey dad, I'm gonna borrow your game and you never see it until one day it just randomly pops up, you know, in a driveway or something. And true story, that has happened. I just don't like having scores of gaming cases in my office or scattered across my home either. Sure, while I do have a number of physical games, those were mainly due to owning older games or people giving them to me, or them being part of bundles when I buy a console, or my wife going out and randomly buying a game for me, or for some other reason, like me going to a store and saying, oh wow, here's another game that I have five copies on, I just need to buy it because it was $5. Compared to the average gamer, my physical games compared to my digital games ratio heavily leans towards digital games. So when Remedy Entertainment announced that Alan Wake 2 was going to be a digital only game, it really didn't bother me whatsoever. In fact, what Remedy is doing is exactly what scores of publishers had said to us for years and it yet lied to us, telling us that if we bought our games digitally, that the prices would be cheaper. And yet we still see games that are $60, even $70 that are digital. So I fail to see where the cost saving is here. Trust me when I say this, if I'd never had to purchase another physical game ever again, I would not care in the least bit, not at all. But I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna say, hey Keith, what about ownership? And to that, I wanna ask a question. What about ownership? Sure, we've all seen that there have been issues with digital ownership, people losing their accounts, such as being compromised, hacked, or doing something like a chargeback and having PlayStation removing access to years of content. But we've also seen people lose thousands of dollars of physical games to the fires and floods, theft and more. So I'd rather take my chances going digital and playing Russian Roulette. Of course, that's also the part that we truly never own our games. That lovely end user agreement that we all have to agree to before we play any game that states in one form or another that we simply do not own the software and that we are only being granted a license that can be pulled away, nullified at any time for any reason. So that doesn't really sound like we own anything, right? at all it's not like you go to a dealership and you pay your money and you purchase the car that car is your the manufacturer of that car can't go up to you and go well i'm sorry mr mitchell we're going to, have to take that car away from you for some reason or another no it's mine i own it but when we purchase a game either physically or digitally we have to agree to that stupid agreement and if we don't then we can't play the game we've got many games to go hey you must read this giant wall of text and if you agree then hit okay and if you don't agree hit decline and you can't play the game so we are literally forced to adhere to that agreement, which also means, yet again, 
we don't own these games. No matter what somebody tells you, we don't own them. Granted, we've never had a court case that I'm aware of that would go and dispute that. So unless you know of one, let me know in the comments because I am not aware of one. Maybe I'm blowing this out of the water, but as I've said many times during this video, I simply am not a fan of physical games anymore. I've done this whole physical game thing dating back from the NES, Super NES, GameCube, Sega Genesis, Sega Master System, TurboGrafx-16, the list goes on, and we're in the future. We're finally where we wanted to be before, we were like, hey, would it be cool if we can just instantly get games on our consoles where we don't have to worry about going to the store? We're here, we are at the future, and now we have this pushback that we don't want to be here. We want to go backwards in time. We want to degress. And it blows my mind to see so many people getting frustrated that some developers are going, hey, by the way, we're going to make these games digital only. Now, there is a certain part I understand because of bandwidth and especially in the North America or United States of America where our broadband uh, and our regulators are garbage. They're crap. I hate living here due to that. Well, I hate living here due to a couple things, but that's one part of the equation and it's silly. We've got bandwidth caps. Uh, we've got all these silly things in place when we really shouldn't. So if there's any big pushback against digital games, it would be this. But other than that, I think we should be going, hey, digital games are amazing and we should be embracing them. Especially if it drives game prices down. Who wants $70 games? Definitely not me. Who wants $80 games? Definitely not me. So we'll just have to wait and see. But if you ask me, to vote on digital games or physical games, I'm gonna take this physical game and break it over somebody's head because I'm done with it. That said, if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, do us a big favor and subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching this video.